So if you paint in acrylics and you're thinking about switching to oils, you're gonna to wanna to check out this video because I got 10 great tips that will help you out. Welcome to Paint Coach. My name is Chris Fornatero and I'm here to help simplify oil painting so that you can get better faster. All right, let's not waste any time and jump on in with tip number one, which is don't try and speed up the dry time of your oil paint. This is one of the most common mistakes I see people do is that they switch from acrylics to oils and they try and make oils behave like acrylics. You don't wanna do that. You want to lean into what makes oils different. And one of the main things that makes them different is the slow dry time. You wanna use that to your advantage and you want to work wet into wet paint. I know it sounds scary and probably a lot of times when you've tried oils, they're really hard to control. But one of the coolest things about oil paints is that you can manipulate the paint once it's already on the canvas. If you have a color down, you can work another color into another color because it's still wet and change the color that's on the canvas. You can thicken up the paint, you can thin down the paint, you can wipe off the paint if you don't like what you're doing and you want to start over in that section. And since all the paint is wet, it makes it a lot easier to make smoother transitions. The paint kind of naturally blends itself. With acrylics, they dry so fast that you can't really work color into other color on the canvas because it just dries so quickly and you have to just completely cover that initial color with a new color, which can make things difficult and it can make making transitions a little more difficult. At least I struggle with that when painting this apple. And when I wanted to work a color into another color, the closest thing I could do was just make the acrylic paint more transparent and try and lay it down on top of it so I didn't completely lose that color that I put down underneath, which I ended up not being that big of a fan of and I just felt very limited. Doing this test, painting this apple with acrylics and then oils, I was amazed at how restricted I felt with acrylic paint. I felt like I was forced to work a specific way, which was a lot of layering. And I felt like I couldn't get the same amount of subtlety in my shifts and values and colors as I could with oils. But then again, I'm an oil painter. I haven't painted with acrylics in a really long time. I think the last time I painted in acrylics, I was teaching one of those wine and paint nights. I actually got fired from that job. But that's another story for another video. I can honestly say though, once you get a hold of oil paints, they are a lot easier than acrylics. At least I think so. I just feel like I have so many more options. I mean, if I mess something up, I can just wipe it off and try it again. I was actually planning on doing an entire portrait with acrylics for this video. But after doing this apple, I was like, man, our acrylics are tough. I don't wanna try and do a portrait. I don't think it'll turn out too good. All right, tip number two. If you're going into oils, don't think that when you start a painting, you have to start it with very thick paint. I know I thought this when I first started oil painting. I'd see master oil painters and they used really thick paint. And, and all the paintings I seemed to like were paintings with a lot of paint built up. And I thought that I needed to just go in there right from the start with thick paint. And what happened was I ran into a lot of problems. It was really hard to build the paint up and it just limited what I could do and it became kind of a big sloppy mess. So the solution to that is try and work thin to thick. You know, start with more paint thinner in your paint and as the paint progresses, slowly get thicker and thicker with your paint. It's gonna make it a lot easier to layer up your paint. Another way to think about it is at the beginning of your paintings, think about pushing the paint. You know, it's thin, you're moving around, you're working colors into other colors. But by the end of the painting, you are applying the paint. You have a good amount of paint on your brush and you're laying down a stroke with the intention of leaving it there, almost like you're putting down a sticker. Now, if you still feel uncomfortable with oil paint and you feel like you just can't control it and get it to do what you want it to do, I've actually made an entire video addressing that problem that you'll probably like. I'll put a link to it above right now. All right, tip number three is actually kind of an inverse of tip number two, which is don't be afraid of thick paint. Yes, you probably wanna start off with thinner paint, but you wanna be able to work to thicker paint. And in order to do that, you're gonna to have to put out enough paint on your palette. Big mistake I always see beginners make is they try and conserve paint. I know oil paint isn't the cheapest thing in the world, but you gotta let that go and be willing to throw away paint at the end of your session. Don't worry, later on in this video, I'm gonna talk about saving money with oil painting materials. But you wanna put out enough paint so you use enough paint. If you don't put it out, you're not gonna use it. You know, the ability to use thicker paint is one of the main things, if not the main thing, that oils can achieve that acrylics really can't. You know, you look at a lot of old master works like John Singer Sargent, Edgar Payne, Joaquin Soroya, they were definitely not afraid to use thicker paint. And especially if you see one of these paintings in life, just the texture of it and, and the impression it has on you is just something else. I can't explain it. All I can say is, you know, when I see those paintings and you can see that paint and you can feel it, it's just a different thing. Now, in order to use thicker paint, you're going to have to make sure that you have good oil painting brushes. Now, you're not going to want to use brushes that you might be using for acrylics or watercolors. You know, oil painting brushes they're gonna be a little more sturdier. They're gonna be able to hold more paint because oil paint is just heavier. 
You'll be able to apply that paint. Now, if you have absolutely like no idea what brushes you should get or what sizes or anything, I've tried to solve that problem by creating my own brush set with Rosemary & Co brushes. The brushes I recommend for beginners, I boiled it down to just the essentials so you don't have to spend money on things you're not gonna use. So if you wanna check those out, I have a link to them in the description of this video. All right, tip number four is Layering oil paint is not as hard as you think it is. I feel like one of the main reasons people are hesitant to move from acrylics to oils is they like the control they have with acrylics. And in ways it is a lot easier, you know, it is easier to layer paint because it dries so quick and you can layer over top of it very easy. But doing the same thing with oil paint isn't as hard as you think it is. You know, working thin to thick is gonna solve a lot of that problem. But since oils also offer the ability to work wet into wet paint and manipulate the paint that's on the canvas and wipe it off, it's just gonna give you more options when you're painting. And I just think that acrylic's ability to be layered a little bit easier isn't worth sacrificing everything else you can do with oils. That's just my opinion, so don't be scared going into oils. In reality, you have a lot more options. All right, tip number five is start by just getting the primary colors when going to oil paints. I recommend starting out with ultramarine blue, uh, cadmium red, cadmium yellow light, and titanium white. Now there's some good things about using the primaries. One, you're gonna develop a very strong understanding of color. I used the primaries for a long time and I felt like it gave me a really good instinct for mixing color. Also, it's gonna save you money. The risk of buying colors that you end up not using is zero because you're gonna use all four of those colors. All right, speaking of color and the primaries, you struggle using the primaries, you don't know how. I actually offer the color mixing video from my Foundations of Oil Painting course for free. I'll put a link to that in the description below. That leads me into tip number six, which is understand that you're not really saving that much money by using acrylics. Now, yes. Acrylics are definitely cheaper to use than oils, but keep in mind that even though the paint is cheaper, you definitely are gonna be using up more acrylic paint than you are oils. One, I felt like the colors and the acrylics I was using were so dull that I had to use so much paint to get the colors to where I wanted. And also the paint would dry so fast on my palette. Whereas with oils, the colors are so rich and strong that it doesn't take as much to change the color. And also oils stay wet for a lot longer. So I'm always you know, scraping off excess paint from my palette and putting on a new fresh palette whenever I'm starting a new paint. It's a lot easier to save and reuse your paint. Now with paint thinner, yes, you have to buy paint thinner. With acrylics, you can use water. But the cool thing with paint thinner is that that you can recycle a lot of it. So if you take your jar of paint thinner and you swish it around, pour it out into a jar or a coffee can and let it sit for a day or two, all of the mud and everything will settle to the bottom and you'll be able to pour off that clean paint thinner and use it again. All right, tip number seven is, if you have a problem with the fumes of oil paint, water mixable oils are great. I've done a ton of paintings with water mixable oils and I'll actually use water the same way I use paint thinner when I'm painting with oils. And the medium I use when doing water mixable oils is the solvent-free gel, which is the same medium I use when I'm painting with regular oil paints. So it's really the same. There's also a company called Chelsea Studios that sells non-toxic paint thinner. So that is another option. Now, tip number eight, it's probably surprise you, but you don't need to use medium. Crazy, right? There's actually a lot of painters that don't use medium while they paint. I actually had a student of mine that was struggling with the transition from acrylics to oils and just didn't understand medium and when to use it or anything like that. And I told him, Hey, just don't use it. Use just the paint thinner. And it worked really well for him. And once he got the hang of that and was comfortable with that, then he introduced using a medium. All right, tip number nine is you don't have to clean your brushes when painting with oils. What I do is I rinse them as good as I can with the paint thinner when I'm done painting, wipe them with a paper towel, and then dip them in this brush dip. Just sold by Mark Carter. He has the YouTube channel, Draw Mix Paint, which is great. I've been using his brush dip forever. I don't get any money from him. He's not telling me to say this. I've just been using that brush dip forever and it is amazing and so convenient. I just dip my brushes in them, set them down on a paper towel. And the oil that you dip it in is so slow drying that any paint that is still in the bristles of the brush won't dry. And I paint pretty much every day. There's no chance of the paint drying and ruining the brush. You know, I've left a brush sitting with that oil for over a week and it was fine. So if you wanna check out that brush dip, I have a link to that also in the description of this video. All right, tip number 10 is, when coming from acrylics to oils, don't worry so much about the fat over lean rule. Yes, it is a rule. Yes, it is important to know, 
But the thing with the Fat Over Lean is that it mainly applies to when you are painting a painting for a longer period of time. You paint a section and the next time you go to paint into that section, it has dried to the touch and you have to paint over that dry paint. See, the thing is, is that even though that paint is dried to the touch, it is not dried on the inside. It can take up to a year for it to fully dry. So the idea is that as you progress with your painting and add on layers, you wanna have more oil with your paint because it makes it more flexible and it won't crack. But if you're just starting out with oils, I highly recommend doing paintings that you can get done in one to two sittings because you are new to this medium, so you need to get as many repetitions at practicing the process from beginning to end. Doing one big painting that takes you two weeks you're not gonna learn as much as doing 10 to seven short, quick paintings in that time span. So when you're working and the paint is all wet, the Fat Over Lean rule doesn't really come into play because all the paint is mixing together. I've been painting with oils for 15 years and I've never had a painting crack. So you don't have to worry about it that much when you're working in that way. All right, that's it for this video. I really hope you found it helpful. If you did, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. If you wanna see what I'm painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. I'm Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting.